Let me read to you a passage from the third chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 7 to 12. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the second week of ordinary time. St. Mark writes, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him, to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the evil spirit saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell who he was. That's from Mark chapter 3, verse 7 to 12. It suggests the universal character of Christ's ministry. What do I mean? Well, there is no doubt about it. It was unusual for news to reach the holy city for a prophet, a great one indeed, to appear out of Galilee. When influential members of the Sanhedrin berated the temple officers, the temple guard, for not arresting Jesus, in John chapter 7, verse 45 to 52, Nicodemus protested that he was not being given a hearing. They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Search and you will see that no prophet is to rise from Galilee. Chapter 7, John chapter 7, verse 52. As a matter of fact, they had not got right their scriptures. We read in the second book of Kings, chapter 14, verse 25, that Jeroboam, king of Israel, the northern kingdom, restored the border of Israel according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke by his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, who was from gath Hefe. gath Hefe is west of the Lake of Galilee, a little northwest of Mount Tabor, and within several miles of Nazareth and Zephyrus. Indeed, he is usually identified also as the prophet of the book of Jonah, with a mission then to the heathen, Nineveh, and one of the earliest prophets of whose writings we have some record. He may have been a near contemporary of Hosea and Amos. Our Lord describes himself by referring to Jonah. There is a greater than Jonah here. Jonah was from Galilee. Again, there is the great Elijah who appeared together with Moses conversing with our Lord in glory at his transfiguration. He then is an archetype, archetypal figure of the prophets of the chosen people of God. He suddenly appears in the first book of Kings, chapter 17, verse 1, and he is the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead. He delivers a message from the Lord to Ahab, the king of Israel. Tishbe is generally located in Galilee. So Elijah was a Galilean. We read in the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 1, that Nahum, the prophet, was from Elkosh, which is thought by some to be in Upper Galilee, though others place it near the Tigris. It is to be noted that both Jonah and Nahum have prophecies directed to the Gentiles, the Assyrians. Admittedly, it was rare for prophets to be from Galilee, but Isaiah had predicted that, and I quote, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honour Galilee of the nations, of the Gentiles, by the way of the sea along the Jordan. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1. Jesus was the great fulfilment of this prophecy. There is a certain universalist dimension in the very fact of our Lord being a Galilean, a prophet from Galilee. For the Judean temple aristocracy, Jesus of Nazareth came from, well, away up there. 
his very accent would have been different. And Peter's Galilean accent was identified as such during the trial of Christ. You know, when dying on the cross, our Lord cries out to his heavenly Father, Eloi, Eloi. Now the Tabum of Psalm 22 begins with Eli, Eli, as in the Hebrew. It could be that Christ's pronunciation of Psalm 22 verse 1, carefully recorded by Mark, is an instance of Christ's Galilean accent. Eloi, Eloi. All this could be seen as part and parcel of Christ being of a setting already connected with the nations, even though he himself had for his mission the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Further, in our Gospel today we read of people coming to him, not only from Galilee, not only from Judea and from Jerusalem, but from Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Idumea was situated south of Judah, Judea and the Dead Sea, but its limits, bordering on the wilderness, are difficult to determine. It was understood as encompassing the territory occupied by those claiming descent from the Edomites. Herod the Great was an Idumean. People came to our Lord also from across the Jordan, to the east that is. This may have included parts of the Decapolis, which was a Gentile area. They came from the opposite direction as well, from around Tyre and Sidon, in the area of present Lebanon. All up, we have a picture that suggests not only the chosen people of God, but an openness to the nations. Our Lord himself, the most striking of the prophets, for his teaching, his powers, his goodness, and the awesome acknowledgement of him by the demons themselves, was of a setting that had a Gentile touch to it. There were being drawn to him not only persons from the chosen people of God, but beyond. That is to say, while from the very first our Lord is utterly and lovingly committed to the house of Israel, he is also from the first showing, as we see and as his disciples would have seen by hindsight, the beginnings of a universal reach, a universal kingdom. It will not be a great step for him, risen from the dead and about to ascend to his heavenly Father to command his disciples to go to the whole world and make disciples of all the nations. Let us place ourselves in our gospel scene, the setting that I read earlier, and mingle with this diverse crowd. We are in Galilee of the nations. The master himself, though born in Bethlehem, is a Galilean and speaks as one. Jostling in the crowd are people from various parts, many with little connection to Judea, many with less connection to Jerusalem and the temple. There are those who come from the Gentile world nearby. It is the beginning of the grandest story of all, and it will carry on to the end of the world. The church has history for its field, and the task is to bring Jesus to the nations. Let us, let us who regard ourselves as Christ's disciples, enter into the work then, the work of bringing the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ to the world around us.